Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian. And I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my videos I try to update you on the situation in Ukraine. I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, culture and language. And to tell you the truth, I am really happy that so many of you ask me questions about our Ukrainian language, Cyrillic alphabet and other things. And as a former linguistic teacher, I think it's quite difficult to explain something in one vlog. And at the same time, I don't want to be boring and to give you lots of grammar facts that you won't need at all. So I will try to focus on some interesting facts about Ukrainian language and maybe I will introduce you to a couple of words, you know, those words that we typically want to know in a language when we plan to survive in a country or at least to make this positive impression because I'm always glad when I hear Ukrainian words from uh, foreigners and I always like to learn a couple of words of the country I'm traveling to in those happy times when I was traveling, actually. So, Ukrainian is uh, quite a big language and we have uh, more than 45 million native speakers, the majority of whom live, of course, on the territory of Ukraine, but also there are many in other countries where Ukrainian diaspora lives. And it's really cool that many people in Canada, in the United States, in Brazil, in Argentina, in Poland and other countries, Australia, where there are lots of uh, Ukrainians preserve language and uh, traditions. And uh, so this is actually a very large language, if it's possible to say so, if to compare with many world languages, uh, it seems to me it ranks in the fir first 20 widely spoken languages or something like that. Because we are a big country, we have a big population, and as a result, Russians fail to totally Russify us, and as a result, Ukrainian is a widely spoken language. What makes this language more complicated for many people who come from uh, the United States, from the Western countries, is of course the Cyrillic alphabet. We have different kind of letters, some of which are similar to the Latin alphabet and others are different. Plus, sometimes we have these different readings of the letters that seem familiar for uh, English speakers, for example. Like letter P, uh, when you write it in Ukrainian, this will be uh, letter R, standing for sound R, like Rojevi and uh, some other things. But um, I have heard lots of ideas to switch Ukrainian language into Latin alphabet to you know, to break up with this Russian cultural heritage, but I do not support this idea. Well, first of all, because it is not Russian alphabet, it is Cyrillic, a Cyrillic alphabet that is used in many Slavic uh, languages. It is also our history and uh, Ukrainian Rus language stood somewhere at the beginning. Plus, it's a very expensive thing. You have to reteach people, you have to reprint the books, and it seems to me this is not what we need at all. So, this Cyrillic alphabet can be a problem when you want to learn how to write Ukrainian, but uh, it's pretty simple. And we have more letters than the English alphabet. Personally, I prefer <laughs> English alphabet because it's not that difficult to. Uh, learn. Also, of course, there are some specific Ukrainian sounds, but I will not pronounce them because you have to hear them in context and something similar exists in your languages, but maybe not as one sound, but as a combination of sounds. But in general, uh, I have had a video on palanita, which is a word meaning a loaf of bread that is very difficult to pronounce for Russian. And in particular, the sound uh, Palanitia, which sounds quite soft, like when you soften the pretty complicated sound tia. And uh, there are other words that are difficult to pronounce, but I think with a proper teacher you won't have problems to do that. And uh, one of uh, the other reasons, perhaps something that is pretty different, is that we have two sounds and we often notice that in the way foreigners pronounce the name of our capital, Kyiv. Because we have two sounds, E and Ö. 
and uh, the proper name, the Ukrainian version is Kyiv, because Kyiv was named after Kyiv, one of the brothers, founders of the city. And, uh, but uh, once again, if you practice, you will be able to recognize these sounds. I know for my Ukrainian ear, it's pretty difficult to recognize the lands of the sound, like in English, uh, or the width of the sound, like the way you pronounce it, can change the meaning of the word. In Ukrainian, we don't have things like that. So no matter how long your vowel is, it does not change the meaning of uh, the word in general. <clears throat> And perhaps one more thing that I will start uh, my introduction to the Ukrainian vocabulary will be about the word love. It's a very popular word that people all over the world learn when they start learning any language and you know the way it's pronounced that amor in Spanish or... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, in Ukrainian we have two words uh, that uh, demonstrate the state and uh, sometimes it's very easy to recognize a foreigner by uh, the way they use this word in a wrong way so we have one word uh love which which we use lubov and it stands for this kind of universal love you can love this way your mother your motherland your wife uh, your cat your favorite chocolate and there is a word kohanya which means um, love to like a person, a more romantic feeling. Uh, you cannot love your mother that way. And it's very funny because many people, when they learn the language, they learn kohanya is a particular Ukrainian word for love and they start using it. Ya kochayu chocolate, And this does not sound uh, okay. But it's, once again, as with all linguistic mistakes, typically they are very cute. And uh, I don't think, same way as an accent, I don't think these things interfere in communication. They only spice it up. So if you want to start learning Ukrainian, don't hesitate. So a couple of words I want to introduce you to. Well, perhaps the first one, hello, is privit. Привіт. Once again, that ö sound. Привіт. Then, if you want to say thank you, many of you write that word in um, my comments. Uh, that is дякую. Дякую. Дякую тобі, which means thank you. And also, when you want to say someone, to answer someone, you are welcome, you will say будь ласка. Будь Laska, which actually means something very cute, something like um, be kind, or I, it has some logics, but anyway. Uh, good afternoon in Ukrainian is Dobroho dnia, which means just the same, Dobroho dnia. And um, today, as it's pretty late in my country right now, you can uh, wish people uh, good night. So we typically say na dobranić. Na dobranić, which means something like take a good night. And anyway, I think that uh, my language is pretty melodic, but all languages are beautiful. I'm a kind of a person that believes that uh, any foreign language is good. And the more languages you know, the better. And uh, when speaking about the similarities between Slavic languages, because Ukrainian belongs to a Slavic group, no, Russian is not the closest language to Ukrainian. The closest language to Ukrainian is Belarus. The second one is Polish. The third one is Slovak. And I was surprised how many things I could understand in the country when I was visiting Kosice. And uh, only the fourth is Russian. So if you don't learn Russian, you uh, won't be like, it, it, is, it does not mean that if you uh, know Ukrainian, you will 100% understand Russian. No, it does not work like that. It will be easier for you to understand 
Belarus people or uh, Polish people, for example, I don't have any problems understanding many uh, Slavic languages. I don't speak them, but I can understand the general topic. I can explain something about myself. So uh, this is pretty interchangeable. And I think another important thing is that Ukrainians, Polish people, Czech people, we want to understand each other and we turn on that attention and when you start listening in a couple of minutes you adapt to the language and you start understanding it and russians typically don't do that and they start like encouraging others just to skip and speak russian don't you know the normal language so you see all of that imperial bullshit Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your questions. If you will be interested uh, in some facts or some more introduction to the Ukrainian language, please let me know. Thank you for your coffees and your support that you give me. Thank you for your likes and of course your subscriptions. Slava Ukraini!